Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? Fitzy and Whipper. Uh, Kate Ritchie, welcome to the podcast. Big, big one. Someone yell out action. Action. I action. just wanted to feel like I was in the room again. We're doing a scene Lights, from home. Lights, camera. Action. Kate Ritchie, special performance. You and a guest star to work alongside you in a home and away scene. I've organised the whole thing. You're going to love this. It's a clever script. (laughs) It's a home and away actor. It's an international star. This is such a big moment. (laughs) You are both, but we're going to... Believe it or not, we've found someone just as good as you to work alongside you. A very, very important podcast. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Let's talk about ageing because it's something you're not going to bloody stop, you know what I mean? Death and taxes, two certainties in life. (laughs) You're not wrong, Web. You're not wrong. Um, Tom, I've been looking at you and also Fitzy, and I won't comment on Kate Ritchie, but you two have been ageing rapidly. What about you? Not me. No way known. Not with my beautiful skin. In fact, do you know what's frustrated me lately? Uh, We've spoken enough on this show about the hair meds, right? Yeah. But when I do my hair in the morning, a lot of hair's been coming out. Like, a lot of hair... And From I your head or, yeah, or yeah, back, back or, or yeah. shoulders, triceps. triceps, yeah, and my yep. hands, my palms. Uh, my toes buttocks um, from my bum um, no from my head Ryan James and I'm like man I'm on the meds what are, the you, meds, coming, what are you coming out from on the meds meds man? can't be good for you to take for the rest of your life oh. I, it just doesn't seem right to me um, I mean okay. you had to get off them to have a child so oh. there, there's got to be something wrong there's yeah. got to be long term side effects I can't see any I mean my brain is working fine I feel great every day I leap out of bed at 4am in the morning oh, debatable uh, one man has said I know if you're worried about ageing I can stop it in its tracks right now this guy right so let's paint a picture julius abram he's got three jobs and he's got three kids so Why this does he man need three jobs he's well to pay for three kids can i tell you what he does he's a comedian he's a quiz host and a yeah. car auctioneer facilitator <laughs> <laughs> A car auctioneer facilitator. So does that well, mean he just says, yeah, do it in the room over there? Well, if you're selling cars, you're a yeah. bit of a comedian yourself, uh, aren't you, I yeah. suppose, in life? So let's hope he's not having a laugh when he tells us this. He's 54 years old. People often think he's in his 20s. And that's because of one thing that he's been doing for 18 years Selling now. cars? No. 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 Telling bad jokes? No. Hosting quizzes? No. What he does is he creates a vegetable uh, broth or juice that he drinks every day. So every day, without fail, he steams up uh, some carrots, half a bag of kale, a whole broccoli and some cauliflower, and then he steams it in water overnight and he'll let it then sit there and soak in the water and then the next day he says he's got the perfect broth, the perfect vegetable tipple to tip into my system. Um, There'd be no nutrients at all in that, would they? You're not actually eating the vegetable. Well, he peels the veggies, he takes the skin off and then chops it up and then he places it into the steamer Um, and then the next day he drinks it so it cools overnight and then he'll eat the veggies. So he drinks his water and then he eats the veggies. Could you argue that it's just the amount of vegetables he's eating every day and not actually... The vegetable water that's doing what he Veggie thinks water, it might yeah. be doing. He's Doesn't the meal it. prep king, some might say. I mean, vegetable broth is not bad. I, I mean, I've had you, you you chuck vegetable broth into a stew quite regularly, but I don't know steaming vegetables into water. Wouldn't you just eat the veggies? What's the point of the water? Jump in, anybody, if you think I'm missing something here. But I can't see. I mean, you'd have a higher concentrate just eating the goodness in the veg yeah. on the side of the plate while you had a steak, if you ask me, than drinking the broth of the boiled veg. I'm, I'm interested to see what the next superfood is. Oh, because, yeah. I mean, what have we, we, the, wheat shot gra- the, the wheat grass shot mm. is over now. Kale seems to be over. Kale had its run. Had its 15 minutes of fame, yeah. Kale, didn't it? Kale and was every- everywhere. 
And but kale just is kale is just horrible. I, I even the other day I had crispy kale with my breakfast. Does anyone have crispy kale with their no, breakfast? No, no. It's just nothing. Yeah, it's ash a, does. a garnish that doesn't need to be there. What about? I mean, salmon was a superfood. Um, there was a guy that used to work here, and his name was Kale. Yes, remember that. <laughs> Not a great name. Well, you guys did Kale. You nicknamed him Superfood behind his back. Did we? <laughs> yeah. Tommy, Fitzy was that his did. real name or did they change no. it trying to be cool on air? Because no. that's, that's not a great name. Lovely guy. 13, 20, 10, if your name is Kale, what's it like living with the name Kale? I would suggest not great. Kale's a great name. Oh, give me a break. It's a terrible name. Especially when the, the, when the superfood took off. Yeah. I mean, you, you become an instant star. Yeah, but you don't want to be a superfood. You want to be a person. I don't want to be something that's a trend for five minutes because people think I'm healthy and then end up mm. knowing that I'm a bit of a joke. If we asked you in a later life. <laughs> Life, Is that would me? you rather be a food? Mm. Oh, I reckon you'd put your hand up at <laughs> yeah, some stage. But I would not be kale, mate. I would not be kale. Forget about it. He'd eat seaweed right, on the side. Lobster, lobster whipfly over here. Yeah, seafood linguine. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. God, I get so nervous before big performances. Um, and we're about to hear one. We're about to hear the biggest of the big. Um, I mean, we threw it out there. Uh, Back to the Bay, Home and Away, the movie was a suggestion we threw around. But just to get when you... When you say we, I just want to jump team, in here. Yeah. There was a lot of team. chat from you. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean... Directed by Michael Bay. That's not bad. Who did put Transformers? And Michael Bay was... was he, <laughs> he's one thing. Michael Whipfley is another. Uh, probably a stronger director. Um, Tells and, everyone what to do a lot. Well, no more. More encourages because the team, Channel 7, my friend Julie, she should smarten this out and get a demo to me ASAP if she's serious about returning to Yabby Creek. Do you know what I do know about yeah. Julie? Is I don't think she would have ever asked me to do a demo. She didn't. She asked me. <laughs> uh, she rang me and said, we're going to need something if you want her back. So I organised a little something and the team here put together a scene so you could play and make sure you still had your acting skills. Um, the thing was... Julie said, make it count. Julie said, put a an actor in there that's been at the Bay before, that's done some stuff, and maybe internationally known. Yeah, you got me excited. Leave it with me. Leave it with me, Jules. We're not going to muck around here. So I take you to this moment as we set up the scene. Got a green screen too, and you must go. I mean, it was a very professional <laughs> setup. I mean, think Marvel movie kind oh. of, you know, yeah. special <laughs> effects bit. There was a low budget. <laughs> You're right, Kate Ritchie, and you need to go to our social and have a look at this too, because Kate Ritchie's performance here. But the special guest was ready to go, and here was the moment we played uh, Kate's audition tape to get back to the bay. Having the script to Sally on set at Summer Bay. Are we ready? Three. Two, no, one. Yeah, they don't count. What don't they? Um, action. We open on a wide shot of Summer Bay. We see a familiar, but definitely not forgotten cast member standing on the beach staring out to the waves. Is that me? So it's been a long time. So much has changed, yet somehow everything still feels the same. So much of my life and so much of yours. She looks to her right and smiles. The camera cuts to a wide shot and... We see she is alone. Okay. I remember everything we did together, you and I, the best of friends. Even though you're my imaginary friend, it's funny to think that no one knows how real you are, my sweet Milko. That's good. For years I've been your only friend and I've never asked anything of you. I need you to show yourself. So I'm going to close my eyes and count to three, and then when I open them, I need you to be standing here. Oh. My friend, my companion, my Milko, do you think that you can do that? Oh, this is good. That was really good, heartfelt. <laughs> okay. You're just trying to make me cry. Are we good? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so Sally closes her eyes. Guys, Sally closes her eyes now. One. Two, three. It's me! Oh! <laughs> it's Matt Shervington. He's playing Milko. What is happening? It's Milko. Oh my god! Milko's come to life. 
It's all the, this is just the most bizarre thing Ooh. ever. All these years you were real. I am real. Why are you talking to me? Like and now talking? everyone can see me. Now it says we hug and sing. I'm not singing. A few moments later. You know we belong together. together. Milko with a helium. You, you and, and I forever, forever and ever. Is that not your real voice? Closer each day. Oh, oh, oh. Home, Home and away. And there's you that. are oh. You are the, like the last person you know I imagined. I know you're disappointed. I'm so no. sorry. Finally. I was on Home and Away for three scenes. Were you? As you, yeah, though. Ray Mark. As me, yeah. Yeah. I just don't even know what to say about that. Well, do we have to preface that you did have a dream about my, uh, Matt Shervington? Is that why oh, this is no. fruition? Do you think I credit to the script writers that Milko was seen for the first time? And Milko was Matt Shervington, internationally known as an athlete, but also had appeared on Home and Away about a month ago. I didn't know that. Doing a special scene that only lasted three seconds. So here you were with a true Channel 7 identity that had been at the Bay. I that was feel, so good. I think... Milko I, for the first time. I think I... I mean, I don't know if Shervo's listening, but... Wow. I, um... He was on his knees when you opened your he, eyes. He was, and... Uh, I think he thought I was really disappointed. We I were. think he thought <laughs> I think I think he thought I was hoping for Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. And yeah. um I mean so Shervo, we love you. I mean, you know, I could give you some classes because that was woeful. But right. um, I mean it was his idea to adopt the voice to sort of a jockey type. Uh, and do you know what I let's give him credit. Yeah. The fact that he brought a piece of himself to the character. Yeah, great. Um, great, yeah. Okay. And now I'm embarrassed listening to that back. I just need to point out that that was the first time I'd read the script. Yep. Like it was, I was only Tough. seeing it for okay. the first time. Usually I would be able to rehearse. So, so do not judge me. When you send that video to Channel 7 today, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can be better. I no, can, it's okay. Julie's you know. waiting on the video. And if it doesn't, if we don't get a positive result, then we move on to Ada Nicodemo. Um, but <laughs> so far, so far, so good. So thank you for the submission. Tape. Thank you to Shervo. Uh, you need to go to Instagram right now. Milko finally revealed for the first time. Go and check it out. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Let's talk about this one, guys, because sneaky moves uh, is what this article talks about, about how they up tr- upsell you in a pub. How good is this? So uh, Very simple. These are the tricks that they use so to get you to buy more, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're getting a hamburger and they're trying to push onion rings on you at the same time or a side of chips, they'll say, how many do you want rather than do you want? So if, K Richie, you've come to the counter and said, can I get one burger? Uh, then I'll say, how many onion rings do you want instead of... Do you want onion an onion rings? No, but oh. see, I would I would get quite I would get quite angry with that and say, well, I didn't ask for un- onion rings. Yeah, it is. It's assuming that you want onion yeah, rings. Yeah, it is. It's telling you that you want onion How rings. How many do you want? Though? It's putting I, it in your mind. I'll have six, please. Oh, you have I, to. I, you go three, I, don't three, you? Three to start with. I'm getting a little bit angry when you go into a a, a retail store and they ask if you remember. And then they ask that you can get your 10% off if you become a member, but then they want your mobile number. And it's like, I'm just here to buy a T-shirt. Some of the discounts are good, though. I'm a huge frequenter of Spotlight. Um, I get there all the time for my handy uh, oh, nips and tricks. Oh, for you, Naomi. Arts, yeah. arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. But my wife is the member, so they'll say, oh, what's your membership number? And I have to remember her phone number, which I don't know off by heart. What? You don't know your wife's phone number off by heart? No. What if there's a Tommy meltdown? Tommy and I do. Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> Speed dial one. Um, anyway, let's move on. Here's you need the... to learn that. We okay. need to come back to that. Because 04, you 6, must 7. know that. No, I don't know the rest. Um, Here's the next one they do. So when you go and order a drink, they will say to you, oh, would you like a double or a single? So what they've done there is they've just put that double at the forefront of the customer's mind. So you might look around the pub and go, well, it's quite busy, so I'll grab a double because I don't want to come back here in a minute. Yeah, I didn't so, think pubs were allowed to serve doubles, or did I well, make that up? Well, sometimes you can get a short or a large glass of wine, if you've noticed that. 
There are certain bars that have different types of vodkas as well, and then mm. they, if you don't ask for a certain type of vodka, they'll give you the most expensive one. Yep. And you're forking out a lot. The other one of the tables that use the QR code so you can order food, those apps are seamless when they try and tip you into things. And also, you feel like there's no judgment if you're not standing in front of the person if you want to order something quietly off the app and you feel a bit gluttonous. Oh, yeah. So the apps shamed. are quite good. Well, it, it, it's like the it's like the chocolates. When you go through a supermarket and you yeah. get to at the end and you're about to pay and you're waiting in line and you are just surrounded mm-hmm. by sugar. Mm. You know and what? I will have a Kinder Surprise. <laughs> I was going to say Kinder Surprise. I How love many Kinder, Kinder Surprises? Surprise. I don't like Kinder Surprise. I love surprise. them. I don't like that chocolate. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> you're not. But I know kids like it. It is awesome. And that's why they have them at the register. I didn't even look at the surprise. I just eat the Kinder. Well, it's, it's not a, a surprise. You all, you always know it's a piece of junk. A little gimmicky toy. <laughs> the chocolate is so good. Here's the other one that they do, which you would have seen in a lot of restaurants. They don't put the dollar sign next to the item, so it'll just say thirty-eight. It'll say a steak, thirty-eight. Bowl of pasta, forty. Yeah. You don't feel like you're paying as much if the dollar sign is oh. not next to that number. Oh. You just so see it as a number more than an, an amount. There must be a lot of research around A lot of this. research of trickery into making you spend and buy more. And but I love it. <laughs> when I remember when, the first time I went to Las Vegas and a guy said to me, I said, the bar was chockers. I said, I don't know how to tackle this. And he goes, give me a $50 note. Mm-hmm. So I gave him a $50 note, a US $50 note, and he held it in the air. We were we were six deep in the bar, right? Yeah. We held it in the air. And I'm not joking the bartender said, you up the back, what would you like to drink? And I don't, I don't know, just your classic yeah. Aussie bogan. I oh, said, bourbon and a, coke, mate. I'll have a bourbon and coke. And then he took my 50. Of course he did. The, the bourbon and coke cost me $50, Kate. Mm-hmm. Then the guy turns to me and goes, see that guy there? He'll serve you first every time for the rest of the night. He tipped you a 50. Said, yeah, because I've just given him 50 <laughs> bucks. For one drink. <laughs> and I didn't need to put my hand in the air. I'm six foot six. Yeah, exactly. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Are you feeling lonely at work? Yep. Try building your social fitness. I have no social stamina. This is, this was a really interesting article that I wrote because we talk about physical fitness, we talk about mental fitness. I didn't know about social fitness. You've got to build your social fitness and people can leave it lagging sometimes and not be social and your social fitness, you become really unfit. Okay, so does that mean the less the less you go out, the less you want to go out kind of thing? That's the... But let's, let's focus on work because ah. lo- loneliness in the workplace is a growing problem. 69% of employees globally are reporting dissatisfaction with their social connections at work. <sighs> so many organisational psychologists believe that the key to solving loneliness in the workplace is to build and maintain social fitness. Our social fitness is the act of strengthening social health. Like physical fitness, you have to build up your social muscles through exercise and practice. This is how we break those solitary routines. And many of us have developed those routines and we can't get out of them. We become lonely at work and then you become lonelier and lonelier because you don't know anyone at work. What does this mean? When you go down to get a coffee maybe in in your break, you should always take a friend. Well, and have a chat nice. rather than going and making a cup of tea and crying in the kitchen. Would you like to know how to get socially fit at work, Kate? Yes. Okay, write this down. Although I'm not lonely, I quite like you guys for now. We well, we got an egg sandwich together. We you know we get chicken wraps and things yeah, together. Yeah, we do. Kind of We cute. hold hands down there a bit. No, we don't. What Damn. can we do, Fitz? So a Harvard-trained social scientist has developed the five three one framework what? for social fitness. Five three one. Okay. This is what it entails. You have to connect with five colleagues a week. What? Number two, maintaining at least three close relationships at work. That's the five three. Mm -hmm. And the one is getting one hour of quality connection time each work day. One hour? How do one you fit that in? And what's quality? What's considered quality? Sitting down and going, hey, how's employment for you? No, well, that would be lunchtime, I would say. No. You need to pick one colleague that you sit and have lunch with every day. Okay. But who has an hour lunch break? 
Great air question. Fair call. Yeah, well, well done. Can. One. Well we, done. we do. I mean, we knock off at nine every morning. Yeah. We've, we've got all day for lunch. Yeah, I can get through <laughs> two kilos of mud crab in about two hours. We should do that. Um, so you're suggesting that people should turn up to work today and say, "Hey." Um, if you're open to it, I'd, I'd like to suggest that you and I spend our lunch hour together today. Mm. Well, connecting with five what colleagues colour? a week could be an email. What, what colour are your, your underwear? <laughs> what colour are your it panties? Could be, it could, Don't it could start be. with that, though. You've really got to warm up into that gear. Okay. Um, you do, but yeah, it's just it's just connecting with someone. Hi, I haven't actually met you yet. Uh, yeah, I've been working here for three years. That oh, happens. Oh, I didn't know. Maybe we should go and get a coffee at some stage. That's just connecting. Then maintaining those close relationships. That could be, hey, what are you doing? Oh, you're catching the train home. Why don't we catch the train home together? Then the next step is also, what are you doing for lunch? Let's yeah. spend an hour together. But do you think that we live in a world like that? Like, unless we really read the article and, and we knew what social, what, what yep. are we talking about? Social fitness, social connection mm-hmm. at work. Yeah. If you didn't know that that's where someone was coming from in the office and all of a sudden they started talking to you like that, yeah. wouldn't you just then think they were creepy? No, I think it's well, nice. I reckon I would, if I had it my way, I'd introduce a friendship day at Nova where you were randomly paired with somebody else and on that day, even if you didn't know them, you had to make the effort to find them, like a, a pairing at a party, and then you had to go and find them and give them a hug. But like in the singles the, oh, you can't touch each yeah, but other in the, anymore. No, in the form that you'd fill out, you'd get to choose the gender of the hug because I don't want to hug Reese from sales. No. But, you know, oh. <laughs> But it, but it doesn't it have a to involve a hug. It would be a nice friendship if there was a, involve a hug. You did the hug muncher. You're the hug well, muncher, mate. The, the, well, it's like the singles ball. Was that a su- success? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any couples formed from the singles ball would be the question. Just after the news, we could be calling out your name to pay your bills. Why did you move on so next. quickly? <laughs> The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Kate Ritchie. Yeah, yeah. Being Queen. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit excited about today. So am I, There's Kate always Ritchie. a lot of chat in the studio around what the rounds are going to be like, but I want you to lean into Got this, Got a degree guys. of difficulty for us? What would it be out of oh, ten? Oh, the last one. Stick around. Okay. I'm going to say 10 for that one. So welcome to round 22 of Theme Queen. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, and when eventually cloned, I'll still be one of a kind, <laughs> Kate Ritchie. Very sure. good, Jess. Mm-hmm. Um, the game's very simple. We know how to play it. Three rounds. In each round, there are three songs, and each of the three songs are connected by a theme. Okay, I'm ready. Just have a listen, guys. Work it out. Write your answer down. Let's start with round number one, song number one. <laughs> Love a bit of Tate McRae. Tate. Tate. Song number two. Working okay. I really don't like it when you laugh at the first round because let's be honest, it's it's a warm up round. Degree of difficulty it's zero. Zero. Song number three. All right, guys, come on, give us your answer. Oh, I got no idea. <laughs> um, there's uh, there's times in there. There numbers, you go. Well All right, are we warmed up? Warmed up. Round number two, song number one. Girl, you know you got me, got me. Which pistol shot me, shot me? And I'm here helplessly in love, and nothing can stop Black me. Black Eyed Peas. Love that song. Song number two. Don't funk with my heart. Sorry. Don't oh. funk with my heart. Be very careful. Uh, song number two. Relax, I'm going back to that now. All I'm trying to say is get back to Black Club. Cause I ain't playing around. It's a game called Circle and I don't know how. I'm way too up to back Bit of Eminem and song number three. Oh, M-I-A. Yeah, Paper Planes. That's a great song. It, it is a great song. Better take your money. Is there a is there a cock of a gun in the song, Um, or a gun? There is a cock of a gun, and then there's also the gunshot. Well done. Wow, they all have a gunshot in it. All right, you ready? That was good. Round number three, song number one. See your true colors shining through. I see your true colors. Song number two. 
I think I'm, I'm sniffing. I'm sniffing in the right areas. All right. Well, I'll give you song number three. <clears throat> That's thrown me. I told you it was a bit trickier. Who's that again? Who? Who's Zed. Clarity? Zed Fox's Clarity. Who did we start with? Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Oh, they all shine. They're all things shining. I'm going to go. They're all diamond references. Colours, carrots and clarity. Yes, I'm afraid to say we've got it. Diamond references. Get that earlier, Whip, oh with the amount God. in your house. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> well done. What All a right. great round of theme, Queen. And it's going to be back. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Oh, so much to look forward to. Two days to the Olympics, guys. It's not oh. far away. So you um, you're going to get up on Saturday morning? To watch it? Yeah. Thank opening you. ceremony at 4.30am. Oh. Oh. I don't think the opening ceremony. Swimming. Opening ceremony? You've got all those boats. Boring. Going down the river. <laughs> That'd be amazing. All Celine the athletes. Dion. We've found out Celine Dion's getting paid $2 million for one song. Well, if I was Celine Dion, I'd want $2 million for a what song What a waste well. of money. Couldn't you get someone else like Celeste Dion or something like that? A cover, <laughs> a a cover, cover band cover or something? That'd be a lot cheaper. You've got Lady Gaga performing as well. Yeah. Oh, look, I think now, I mean, and we should, we should, we need to be tuning in, but I have a feeling on a, one of the days where I can have a sleep in, I might just watch the highlights later or something um, and then get oh, really stuck into the sport over the weekend. How good's, weekend. The, how good's the volleyball under the Eiffel Tower? Like, imagine playing there. Spike! Right. Is that what they say? Yeah. And you've just, you're looking in the background, that's just the Eiffel Tower. Not as iconic as the uh, Bondi Beach. Sydney Olympics 2000 with the beach volleyball. Nothing will ever beat that. Pretty amazing. That was when, um, what was her name? Jodie, Jodie Mears, was it? When she started her um, Tiger the, Lily bikini range yeah. by getting girls to wear that in the crowd and it went around the world, Kate. She sold out all her bikini, bikinis. Oh, wow, that's great yeah, marketing. I, I played golf with a girl the other day. Called Jodie Mears. No, in Bondi, just at the little course there. And we were looking down at Bondi Beach. and. What? Uh, and she said, I said, why, why, what are you looking at? She said, oh, it just brings back a lot of memories. And I said, why is that? She said, oh, I won a gold medal in the volleyball at the Sydney Olympics there. What's her name? <laughs> Kerry Pothast? No, it was her friend, her teammate. Oh, you, Have you, you just made oh, this what story is her name? I feel extremely rude. She's doing a lot with Golf Australia now. It was myself and Ned Brockman. Nat, is it Nat? Um, oh, you should oh, have started this really story. Cook. Yeah, Nat it is. Cook. Yeah, I feel really rude. Nat Cook. Is that who it was? Yeah. Kerry Potthaus and Nat Cook, wasn't it? Amazing. They're so And do you know fit. what, Fitz? They catch up every year and they go down to Bondi Beach just to celebrate that moment oh, that that's was. lovely. Well, a gold think, medal on Bondi Beach. Think about the friendships, though, and those people, I suppose, that you would, it would forever have that Olympic bond with. I don't yeah. know if you've seen, seen the videos kind of flowing through. I saw some overnight, of course, the Olympians. They are now in the village, and we were only talking about the it on the beds. show yesterday, the cardboard beds. And, like, surely they can't be uncomfortable because the athletes have to sleep there while yeah. they're playing sport. Um, let's have a listen to some audio about what the beds are actually like. This is how night one went on the cardboard beds. My back is about to fall. It's actually rock solid, but trying to, you can flip them over. Apparently, there's a softer side, but that was the soft side. Come on, so that's already on. <laughs> so I thought it was a cardboard base, and then you got to pick your mattress. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it doesn't look great. I know no, it's it good for the em- environment, but I think you need a good night's sleep if you're going out to win a gold medal. I saw a video yesterday. When the athletes enter the village, they actually get a full body scan, and then based on that, the doctors tell them there's three parts to the bed, which way they should actually fold it. They should, you know, move position mm. three into position one. That might help if you, you know, need more back support or whatever. Hey, doctor, why don't so I tell you what type of mattress so I like? That, that's That's amazing. amazing. Well, Tom, your nickname in high school was the mattress. Mattress, wasn't yeah. It? Always lying oh down. Oh my gosh. 
Jack's not in the show no, like no, that. Because, yeah. No, yeah. because he he had back problems, yeah. Tom, and he, so you, you had to get a, you had a custom made yeah. mattress. He broken you? springs and things. That's so right. remember the sealing the, tour of Cambria went the, on the um, old Sealy Postopedic. That's here, what guys. I meant to say. Oh, so. Who was the, what was the dancing? Um, the dancing, the dancing doona. mattress. The dancing doona. <laughs> remember no. the oh, ad? Oh, big remember the ad that ran, the ad that ran in New South Wales where Ooh, there was the guy the dressed as a mattress dancing outside the bed shop? What was company it? was that? Oh, oh we could be, been, we'll uh, be here all day. One. Give us a call. Yeah, give us know. a call with your favourite mattress. I'll hang around mat- and take your calls till 11 yeah. with Adam, maybe. <laughs> What's your favourite mattress brand? Um, <laughs> did your mum and dad have a waterbed? No, My they weren't had that one. Cool. Yeah, we had one. It was one. disgusting. It was yes. Captain Snooze, Kate, to answer your question. Oh, thank you very much. The waterbed was a weird phase, wasn't it? Oh, I think it was, it was all a bit 70s and strange. Oh, and it was so and weird. Yeah, it was a bit Our dumb. parents were sick back then, it was wasn't it? Sexual, this wasn't it? Sick stuff going on. You couldn't get in, I'm, and then you couldn't get out. I imagine Mick Fitzgerald on the waterbed. He would have oh, caused a couple gosh. of waves. Two Tell us the names. That said, there was a swell report every morning in the Fitzgerald <laughs> oh. report. Offshore, King Don't Tides. go into. <laughs> Dad would say, "Don't go into our room. It's offshore, and it's only take, a foot today. Take a lifeboat." It's huge. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. How emotional are you? What do you cry over? And you can dob in your partner because I am well, about to start? dob in my partner. Um. 13, 24, 10. How emotional are you? And what is the most ridiculous thing that you've cried over? This is why I love my wife so much, though, because she's getting the age now where our boys are becoming teenagers. And over the weekend, Huey had three mates stay over for a sleepover. And because it was BJ's birthday on Monday... Everyone calls her BJ. Her, she, her name is Belinda J, so she's known as BJ. And over the weekend, these young lads, I must admit, Kate, their manners were unbelievable. Mm. Really, really good manners. And they kept calling her Belinda. Thank you so much, Belinda. Happy birthday for Monday, Belinda. And there was a moment where I saw her run out of the room. Yeah. And I went around. I said, are you all right, honey? She was crying her eyes out. She goes, I can't believe how good of manners those young men have. I'm going, honey, you, you are crying good over manners. some teenage boys who have good manners. I think that's so sweet, though. But it's also like a, it's a it's an indication of pa- perhaps her parenting and she's so proud of her boys. It's more about that, that they've yeah. found themselves within a, gr- a group. He, that he she- said please and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they called me Belinda and I loved it. I can't. They opened the door for me, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't hold it anymore. It's funny, this isn't is, it? This funny is what gets you well, at what it, time. Maybe she was crying because sometimes those things can make you feel old as well. <laughs> when <laughs> yeah, young no, yeah. people start being really polite to you and mm. calling you madam, and you realise you've moved you into, into a completely you know different age category. I, I nearly had a tear last night. I was in bed going hard on the talk. And, oh, um, thank God for what? that. Far That's out. It's right. going really hard on the talk. I don't know. Fifteen that minutes. rhymes with something else. Which rock? Which, well, it's. <laughs> I don't get it. Anyway, there was a, a video oh, that wow. popped up, and it was just of things like a VHS tape going into the player. I've seen that. It's like kids of the eighties or was, sounds of. It something. was like a yeah. Nintendo sixty four, and then it was just a dad sitting around the table with a cup of coffee reading the paper. And it, I just kind of had this moment of, that's all gone. Like, that's all behind me. That's all. It was kids playing, and I thought that was... It was falling asleep in the back of the car. It was carrying, being carried inside because you'd fallen asleep in the back of the car. Mm. Oh, that's that's sad. It was, I, I don't think it's as sad as... I don't think it's as sad as a middle-aged man on TikTok in his bed before he goes to sleep. <laughs> on his own, up the hallway. <laughs> that's, well. well, that's the thing. Lisa came in and she started crying as well. I said, what's, what's wrong, honey? And she said, have a look at you. You're a mess. You're an absolute mess. I think it's sweet, though, if you can still find... You know, I, I don't think having a cry about those things is a bad thing. Do you yeah. know? Being a bit no. sentimental well, and emotional is good. It, and do you know what? It is good to get out a few tears here and there. Alex in Lane Cove, tell us about your hubby, Alex. Uh, my gorgeous hubby cries every time he hears the opening bars to the theme song of Titanic. 
Titanic. Titanic. Oh, Titanic. <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> Celine Dion. Celine Dion. Go on. Oh, my God. You, Would he be listening right now? Can we play it for him? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no. He's probably laying concrete this morning. All right, let's you, get him you, crying in front of the boys. Uh, and he's a concreter as well. Alex, you need to rock up to the work site one day and just have it playing out of the car and let him cry in front of the, the, his work <laughs> colleagues. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I let's love go, that. Thanks, let's Alex. Let's go to Nadine. Nadine from Edmondson Park. You're a constant crier, Nadine. Yeah, hi, how are you? Good, Nadine. Are you crying right now or uh, late this no, afternoon? Really, I, was, I was this morning a little bit, so I was watching Inside Out with my little <laughs> wife. <laughs> and then it's, it's so sad. I usually cry when I watch Disney movies. I yeah. uh, listen to songs. Uh, especially as well, I cry when I go and watch my kids at school doing any sports event. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, you've got to think about the things that really move you the most in your life right now. I mean, I cried on Friday night watching the AFL. Oh, I was in tears. I dragged myself up the stairs. With, I was screaming. <laughs> with I was having the best time of my life. <laughs> it was a horrible, horrible thing to no, see. I'm trying to think of something I don't cry Oh, over. right. So <laughs> you're going to be honest. Is there something that comes to mind, though, okay, that, where I, you've had that to, makes me cry? That you've had to pull Ooh. yourself in a line and go, okay, okay, you, this is going too far now. I think I'm going through a period of seeing like young families. We were only talking about it earlier, mm-hmm. and Jess here on the show has a gorgeous young son. Yeah, has. And then when you see the little bubbers in the cot where they put their hands up to you, yeah, I think. Yeah, stop yes. crying. Are you crying now? Oh, no, I'm not. Gone. No, I'm not. It's just like it's like oh, I think it's when you know that yeah. a certain period of your life. Is, is is that part's done? But I think yeah. then it, we should, and this is me trying to be positive, is that look towards the next period because whatever we're in now will be something we're also looking back on 100%, at some point, and it, yeah. you wish things away. And it's oh, just we went not into great. Chargrill Charlie's the other day, Kate, and there's a photo. And they were crying that you were in there. <laughs> no, there was a photo. There was no gravy. <laughs> there was a photo of me on the wall in there, right? And we sat down at the table next to the photo board. <laughs> And Ted goes, Dad, there's you on the wall. And I went, oh, yeah, yeah. Why do you have your photos? I don't know. You know how they have photos of people that have gone <laughs> in there? Oh, oh, a yeah. regular customer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do not serve this man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This guy okay. owes rent. Okay. <laughs> and Ted said, look how young you are. Uh. And right now I'm looking young because in 10 years' time... I'll look back on me now mm. and I'll know that what? I was young then. Where's the crying bit? Did you cry or <laughs> what what's this got to do with crying? Moments in time. No, what I know Kate what is saying, saying right now is the best. Do you know what when right now, right right now will now be the great. best will be the good yes. old days. Although or something Although you might like be that. crying looking back, realize that right now, yes, will one day be the good old days, but you're in it now. So live oh. the now is yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. Can we go to Lisa in Levington? And what made you cry recently, Lise? Oh, well, I cried last night, but that's a different story. Oh. Um, oh. The story I'd like to tell you is when my daughter turned 10, I, I invited her friends to go to the movies and we watched If. By yeah. the end of it, I'm bawling. I look over and her 15 friends are bawling their eyes out. So I didn't feel as bad. Oh, what has so nice. Imaginary friend, isn't it? With um, Ryan Reynolds? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Matt Shervington playing Milcote. Well, which you can now see on our socials. Well, it was like, and the movie <laughs> Up as well. That, mm. that that a little old man. Oh, Tommy, see Tommy start oh, as soon as I hear the well. music from Up. The really? soundtrack to Up. So it's good. just oh. What happens to him? Does he die? No, it's well, uh, no, well, I don't want to ruin it. He's but dead. it's an amazing love story in the the start of that movie, the journey of he and his wife. Yeah, before, it's, and it's, then the new journey that he goes on you, with his house. You seen Marlo and Otis? Oh. Amazing. That's not real, mate. No, there but was, apparently, like I heard there was a few Milo's that yeah. passed away during yeah, the film. Thing was about twenty. About twenty dogs 20 died in Milo's. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. What? yeah they oh. had to change all the rules uh, around um, animals in movies after, after that. Milo and Otis. Milo and Otis. Oh. You know, sorry, Milo. It's make me cry. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tina in Winston Hills. Tell us about your husband, Tina. Uh, he cried about twenty years ago when we won three one in Germany at the Soccer World Cup. <laughs> yeah. And we beat Japan, and I said to him at the time, you better cry at our wedding. 
Well, he did, and I had to finish the speech for him. Awesome. So. <laughs> It's all right. I mean, a wedding's I mean, an emotional day, Tina. How many videos do you watch of the, you know, when I'm a sucker for the videos where the groom is waiting for the bride to arrive and he yeah. kind of turns around and he's he got the quivering lip. Yeah. And he, do you know the other one, Kate Ritchie, is when the soldier comes home from war. Do you know, well, and I love this one that's, too. That's, yeah, they're great obvious. videos. But what about the one where they go, hey, let's take a photo of you with a Polaroid and they don't know, the person doesn't know that their husband has come back from war, right? Oh, yeah. And they're in the background. And they're in the background. So then the Polaroid's done. She has a look at it and sees her oh, hubby yeah. behind oh, her and then so turns awesome. around Extra and that. bursts into tears. I cried when Maccabi Diva won her third <laughs> Melbourne Cup. I did. Because How much she, you have on it? Well, I, yeah, I did all right in that sense. But uh, uh, she wasn't meant to win, Kate. Too old. They said the horse was too old. Can't win its third <laughs> Melbourne Cup. Yeah. And it did. And it did. And I said to all you suckers out there... <laughs> Well done, it's got him again. It's got him again. <laughs> Mary, Mary and Guildford. Hi, Mary. Hello, Mary. Something about Mary. Oh, Mary's crying. Grabbing she's, a tissue. She's, she's all over the Kleenex. Ah, you there, Mary, Mary? You there, Mary? Get stuffed, Mary. Ah, come on. That, that, when she's been waiting for a while. We hooked her call and everything. I think she's crying because we kept her on hold for is two Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's missed her doctor's appointment. Too that many was tears. <laughs> we'll see if we can... No, nah, Mary's just dropped out. Nah, so have you guys seen Dances with Wolves? Yeah, oh, with very Kevin long Costner. Time Yeah, the wolf dies. And oh, oh, man, I'm crying what? all over the joint. My T-shirt was soaked. I was sweating as well because I was eating a curry. I cried at uh, Kevin Costner's performance in that movie. It wasn't too good. (laughs) Fits in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.